Sandy Monroe is going to be here to talk about the biggest mistakes that electric car brands are still making today and how to fix them. And we're going to start right now. Welcome to E4 Electric. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss Sandy's almost weekly appearances on this channel plus our weekly electric car news. Now that most electric cars that have been unveiled in the last few years are in production, the mistakes that their makers have been making are proving to be pretty costly. Some have learned their lessons and some haven't. Let's ask Sandy what he thinks are stupid and avoidable mistakes that are being made today and who is still making them. But before that, a quick reminder that this video is brought to you by Driven. Finally, there is a company that's taking the training of Tesla drivers seriously. If you are shopping for a Tesla or currently own one, sign up for a private driven course and let a certified advisor meet up with you and provide a personal experience. You will discover features and driving methods you never knew existed. Sign up today using the link in the description of this video. It's 2022 and we're still seeing you know, manufacturers of electric cars, whether it's startups or legacy, they're manufacturing electric cars, making tons of what I would consider, and I hope you would consider, stupid mistakes, right? We had the yeah. thing with Rivian. Rivian somehow has just, just been like, oh, I just making so many stupid. But we also, you know, have seen the Bolt, how the Bolt fires and the whole recall was handled so poorly with GM. And I can probably go on and on and on for a long time, and so can you. Uh, what are the mistakes that you still see manufacturers, again, could be Tesla, could be Rivian, could be GM, whatever, uh, are still making this year that really are, are hurting the cause? And how would you fix them? Give me like top three. Well, every car company, maybe except for Tesla. Just look at them. I mean, every one of them has made a goofy ass mistake. Why did, why did, why did Toyota even waste their time on something that any physicist would tell you can't work. Why did, why did Honda just produce their new EV that nobody's going to want to buy? Why, wait, why wait, did, what was that why Toyota Chevrolet... thing? What was that Toyota thing you're talking about? I'm talking about the uh, uh, going with a fuel cell. Oh, yeah, the Mirai. It just okay. doesn't work. It, it doesn't, it's too, the, the, the box is too big to fit into the, into the vehicle. It costs too much money. I've got, people forget, a, a fuel cell system is really a hybrid. You have a, a, a generator and you have a battery. You have to have them both. They, they don't work without each other. You have a battery pack, that's a single system. That's a BEV. Don't, don't, don't waste your money and time on two systems. It's like stupid. So, and then, and then, and then uh, things like, oh, we're going to save money like the Bolt. We're going to save money. We're going to take a, a car that nobody wants to buy and we're going to sh shove some batteries in it. In fact, we're not going to do it. We're going to save more money by giving it to somebody else and they're going to shove batteries in it for us, LG. So uh, you look at these things and, and these, are, these are corporate decisions that are made at the top of the house. And what are they thinking? How do we save money? How do we make it so that it's really cheap? Do they go vertical integration? Absolutely not. Why? Oh, we're going to have to make new investments. Why do you think they're not going into things like uh, things like uh, uh, mega castings? Oh, we've got all these stamping dies. We've got these big ass machines in our backyard. We we can't throw those out. We we got to buy more of them. And how are they going to compete? How does that crap that they're producing that's bent and what? How do we how do we do that? How do we compete against the guy over here that's got one machine? who's using basically 20% of the factory that you'd have to have for a stamping. How, how do you compete? Oh, well, that casting's more expensive. Really? Are you sure? Did you do total account and costing? No, you didn't. You're lying to yourself. You went cheap and you lose. And that's, 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 that's it. I can't. All right. Um, what about another one? Something else that, should, I mean, I, you know, there should be plenty of those. What's, what else is, what else is you think that can be fixed? The other thing is sticking with, with standards. Okay. We can't move because here's our book. And, uh, and uh, so anytime that you've got to make a change on a vehicle, you got to go to the change board. So 
The change board gets the, uh, the idea. They go to the book, which was written in 1952. They flip over the pages that talk about whatever this idea is, and they look, and in 1952, that can't be done. Sorry, done, we can't help you, get out. New ideas go nowhere, nowhere in a big company, nowhere. Why? Because the standard says this, and once you've got a standard, you can't change it. Do you know how long it took to get to the point where we could use jet engines? And he's still got a whole bunch of requirements that are stupid. We don't need them. We, don't, we shouldn't have them. It just costs us money. But we still have to do that because it's in the book. And when was the book written? 1949. And that's a fact. I saw the book. 1949 it was published. And they're still on that book. Why can't we have new materials? Well, because in 1972, they put a fixed number on the number of mm, aluminums that are available to us. And if you add or try and add to that book, well, wait a minute, we can't do that. It says right here, no change. You got to stay with the standard. On and on and on. Those are just two examples, but there are thousands of examples, thousands of examples where people can't move because they've they fixed themselves, they, they planted themselves to the ground with a, with a book of standards, and that's, that's it. They, they just won't move. All right, um, so don't be cheap. Um, no to bureaucracy, essentially, what you're saying. What's, what's the last? Give me, give me a third one. The last one is um, invention or vertical integration. All the companies that we see that are hugely successful, and basically, I talked to a toy company yesterday. They're totally vertically integrated. They're number five in the world. Five in the world. They're the fifth best, and it was started by a guy when he was 21 years old in China from New Zealand, and why, how did he invent this, all this, this new stuff, okay? First off, he was bad at spelling. English was not a good thing for him. He didn't have a degree. This guy has no degree. And all he wanted to talk about was toys. His whole life was consumed by toys. Guess what? He's now 37. He made $770 million last year. $770 million building toys. How? How did he do that? Well, no one would help him when he, was, when he first went to China. Okay? No, he's 21 years old. He doesn't speak Chinese, but he wants, to, he wants to start a company. No one would help him. He had to do everything himself. Now, his, uh, his squirt gun has a, has, a, has a printing technique that I've never seen before. Totally unique, totally unique. I've never seen anything like it. How did you do this? Who's doing this? Oh, we did it ourselves. He showed us his, his uh, casting area. The guy, you can't see to the end of the line. I said, how many casting tools you got here? I don't know. We do everything ourselves. He showed me a, a sewing line. He makes little teeny miniature things. I, 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 I never saw so many women sewing stuff up. Everything, everything is vertically integrated. Everything is vertically integrated. He has no outside suppliers for the most part, except for raw materials. And then in one case where he was trying to talk us into how to help him out and whatnot, he makes his own gravel. He makes his own ground up dirt, basically, to make this new product. He made, he's, he's making his own, he's, he's buying steel in billet and turning it into his own steel products. There's no MBA in that guy. He has no degree. He doesn't have an engineering degree. He doesn't have an MBA. He has zero, absolutely no respect for companies except for the ones like Tesla, where the guy in charge, in fact, 
His number one and my number one is the same, leadership. You give me a bunch of leaders that are kind of like ass kissers or, um, or they've clawed, or worse, they've clawed their way to the top, and I'll show you a company that's doomed, doomed to in the future. This guy, he, I mean, I, I've, never, I've never bumped into anybody like this. And by the way, where I say you need to have three functions in a part, like I told you before, he's demanding five. He doesn't have an HR department. He has 140, um, he has 140, um, uh, what do you call them? Um, um, Employees? Uh, recruiters. Oh. No, recruiters to find him people. But he doesn't have any HR. HR wastes his time. So, uh, well, there's, sometimes there are good things in HR, but uh, all right. Now, all right. So we got three things. And normally I would even be embarrassed to ask this question, but because the world is changing pretty quickly and the new guys like Tesla, Rivian, Lucid, and so forth are taking a chunk of, uh, you know, of, of the legacy manufacturer's pie, do you think they will learn on their mistakes and will actually maybe get better at it because now they have to compete with people who do innovate, with people who, you know, do, don't do mind investing money into, into newer products. Uh, do you think they will learn? Okay, so the answer to that is another question. Can you make an elephant tap dance? I personally can't, but I have not researched this, but I'm going to go with no. You can't, yeah. So when we can teach elephants to tap dance, then the big OEMs will learn to be agile because that's what they are, elephants. They're elephants, uh, some people say dinosaurs, but I don't know. But elephants are really hard to teach to tap dance. They're not agile. When they go running in one direction, try not to be in their way, but at the end of the day, we're into a tap dance mode not an, and not an elephant charging at you kind of mode. And that's where the problem lies. Well, I hope they're listening because the competition is getting tougher and the mistakes are getting costlier. For more wisdom from Sandy, check out his channel to which you should subscribe. I put a link to it in the description of this video. All right, looking forward to all of your comments. Other than that, see you guys next time. And remember to stay charged. Take it